Sam Taylor Wood, born Samantha Taylor on the 4th of March in 1967, is an English filmmaker, photographer, and visual artist. Samantha Taylor was born in Croydon, England, and grew up near Streatham Common in South London until her parents' divorce. Taylor Wood first began exhibiting fine art photography in photo galleries in the early 1990s and is perhaps best known for her photography projects like Crying Men and Five Revolutionary Seconds, as well as her video pieces Still Life and A Little Death, which showcase a range of work from interpretive portraits, aesthetically evaluative projects, and even some ethically evaluative concepts. Crying Men, first featured in 2004, features many of Hollywood's male celebrities crying. Many of the portraits appear personal and are open to subjective interpretation. Why are the subjects crying? What has happened before this photo was taken? What has happened after? The viewer is left to create their own interpretive story from these dramatic photos. However, Taylor Wood shot each actor in a role, asking each to perform and cry for the camera. She demanded the actor's investment in the process to create fictional, ambiguous scenes. Each of the resulting images is distinct. There are images of cathartic crying, quiet tears of regret and grief, and yet while being moved by these intimate, revelatory images, we simultaneously know that the emotional display is being play-acted. Moving back to some earlier work, we see more narrative pieces. Taylor Wood began her series of photographs titled Five Revolutionary Seconds in 1995. Taylor Wood used a rotating camera to take five-second shots while capturing a full 360-degree panorama. The resulting photographs are often over six feet in length and depict various settings and characters that the viewer moves through. Despite their physical proximity, the figures appear distant and detached from each other, presumably lost among their own internal thoughts. With the Five Revolutionary Seconds series, I set out to make photographs in which you created your own structure and narrative whilst working within a different time frame because you can't physically take in the whole image at a glance. You have to travel along the length of it and concoct a narrative. I also think about those photographs as showing different states of being simultaneously. You have one person who's bored, a person sleeping, someone taking drugs, two people having sex. You have the embodiment of all those different states of being within one room. It's like encapsulating one person in one room, but within eight different bodies, each one not communicating with the others. Sam Taylor Wood from the book Still Lies. When zoomed in to each individual person, the images work separately as ordinary portraits, whereas looking at the entire panorama with all the different people in the same room is quite surreal. The image unfolds into disjointed pieces in which each character seems lost in their own reality. Boredom, contemplation, and whimsy are present at the same time, creating a shift from a simple, descriptive scene to something that finds complex beauty in a simple space. Perhaps five revolutionary seconds best exemplifies everyday life and pushes the viewer to thus contemplate their own. However, in 2000, Taylor Wood created a giant wraparound photo mural using her 360-degree method to wrap around scaffolding while the facade of a London department store was being restored. Sir Elton John appeared along with 20 other cultural icons in the 900 foot long by 60 foot high mural. The poses of the figures referenced famous works of art from the past as well as recent movies, creating a more descriptive mural rather than the aesthetically evaluative pieces found in five revolutionary seconds. Still life Taylor Wood's brief, silent film showing the accelerated decay of an originally pristine bowl of fruit was created in 2001. It has been said to be one of the most classical works in contemporary art. It is based upon a particular type of still-life painting that developed during the 16th and 17th centuries, making it part of the classical genre. Yet it contains symbols of change, or death, as a reminder of its inevitability. It's focused on confronting the vanity of worldly things through the subtle signs of elapsing time and decay. It also brings to mind many moral questions about the way humans interact with the world around them. 
The image decomposes itself and leaves nothing left but a gray, amorphous mass at the end of the short film. However, a cheap contemporary object, a plastic ballpoint pen that doesn't decay, can be found in the corner. It doesn't seem to be a part of the universal process of self-disappearing life. A unique illustration of human vanity. We are left to question, is this all that's really left when we are gone? Still life would seem to be the perfect expression of decay as a symbol of life and death. However, one year later, it was followed by a similar work, A Little Death. A Little Death was looking at the subject matter from a completely different perspective. It took the idea one step further by bringing in an animal. That animal, specifically the hare, is the symbol of life and virility as well. One of the things I loved about it was how different it was from still life. Still life conveyed a grace in the decay, but with a little death it was not only violent, but shockingly violent. However, one really disturbing aspect was the fact that the peach in the work was a genetically modified peach. In six or seven weeks, it didn't rot, not even slightly. There was no sense of decay at all, and that was quite disconcerting. Sam Taylor Wood Again, Taylor Wood dips into ethically evaluative film work and pushes the viewer to question their morals. How do we live our life, and what will we leave behind when we are gone? Overall, Sam Taylor Wood has shown a wonderful ability to produce a range of work. She can manipulate a subject and push a viewer in a certain direction while still leaving room for personal interpretation. Yet she can also illustrate the everyday in beautiful narrative sequences that makes the viewer contemplate the mundane, the complex, and all the emotions in between. She even manipulates pieces to allow viewers to question their morals or ethics by bringing such harsh topics of death and decay to the forefront. They are forced to evaluate their own life and perhaps change their perspective. And maybe that's what Taylor Wood's range of work does best. It forces the audience to evaluate their perspective.